guys, it's Grim. It's good to have you back today. Um, we're going to do the first part of the installation of Home Assistant on your, uh, on your Synology in a, in a Docker container. Uh, so when we're going to start, uh, we just open up the, the Docker installation on your Synology. So uh, you can see that right here. So I'm, I've clicked Open Docker, so normally you get in the overview window. Uh, from the overview window, you just get into a registry. And you're going to look for the Home Assistant installation. So I'm just going to type in Home uh, Assistant. And I'm going to type Search. And now I can see the Home Assistant uh, images that are actually on the, uh, on the Docker repository. Um, and I will choose the Home Assistant, um, official Home Assistant uh, open source image that's there. So I'm going to click that. Uh, I'm going to click Download. Um, uh, in this case, I won't do it because I've already downloaded it, but that's basically it. Uh, then it starts downloading. You can see that in the image section, uh, you will see that there is the uh, the amount of storage will be bigger and bigger. So uh, the, the the actual image you use is a lot more storage. Uh, you can see it running, and when it's finished, you can actually start up a container, so you can launch it. But we're not going to do that. Um, we're gonna uh, let it download. Just make sure that it's finished, so there is no like um, flickering um, blue light or something in this uh, particular box. You're just gonna wait till it's finished, and when it's finished, it's around one gigabyte. That's it. Next thing we're gonna do is that I'm gonna start Kuti, um, and I need to tell you uh, why. Um, in my case, I use RVXCOM for um, communicating with my uh, 433 megahertz uh, devices. The RFX GAM is a USB device. So uh, it's plugged in uh, into my USB port on my Synology. And I need to initialize that in the image. And that's why I'm going to start a PuTTY session. And for you guys that don't know PuTTY, PuTTY is a uh, terminal connection uh, application. So I'm going to connect via SSH with my Synology server and do the manual configuration of the container over there. If you don't have uh, any RFXCOM or USB device uh, on your Synology, which you want to use, you're just going to click the uh, image and you're going to click Launch. Uh, and from the launch system itself, you can cre actually create the whole image. Um, so I'm going to click the advanced settings. Um, so before I'm going to do the whole PuTTY session, I'm going to do this one first, as you might have understood. Um, so I'm going to do the enable auto restart. So the uh, container automatically restarts if it fills or whatever. Then I'm going to need to fill in the, the volumes. Uh, and that's one of the points. Um, the volumes right now don't exist. So you actually need to create the uh, specific fol folders for your uh, installation. Now I'm going to click the File Station button. And uh, it doesn't matter if you do this via PuTTY or via the uh, graphical user interface. You need to create the folders anyway. Um, so you can see here that I've already created a Home Assistant um, folder, although this is the, uh, the Dutch translation of it. I did that on purpose so that I, I can show you guys uh, how I, uh, I actually can set this one up. Um, so I'm going into the Docker container, uh, and I'm going to create a Home Assistant folder. And I'll call that Home, oh, home Assistant, the English name. Click OK, so there, it's there. Um, then you go, need to go into the Home Assistant folder, and you're going to create a config folder. So I'm going to create another folder that's called config. Nope, that's it. And if you if you take a look at my already installed uh, folder, you can see that there's a config folder in there as well, with a lot of folders in there. Um, but we will come to that later on. So uh, we have created the Home Assistant folder. We have created the config folder. So that's basically the, uh, the start of the installation. So 
So if we go back to the uh, advanced settings, and we're going to uh, uh, click the Add Folder button, we need to go into the Docker folder, then into the right Home System folder, so this, this one, and then we're going to click the Config. And you can see that it fills in the file folder here. Uh, we need to do the mount pad and that slash config. And that's it. For network, I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going to use the same network as the Docker host. Uh, port settings, I use the standard one. Uh, links, no, nothing. And that's basically it. You can click the apply button and it creates a home system. A Docker image and container. That would be next. I'm not going to run it. I don't want it yet. Let's see what happens. So we're going to go from the uh, from the image tab back to the container tab. And then you can actually see that there is a Home Assistant, Home Assistant 1 container created. That's the one we've just created. Um, so I've shut down my, my uh, normal installation, and you can see that there's another one over there. So I'm going to click the Run button. I'm going to enable it so that works. Yep, yep. And it's running. And now we can do all the configuration onto it. This is the version without the RVXCOM. So let's go and dive into the RVXCOM version. I'm going to disable this one again. And just for, um, for the sake of this video, I will remove this one as well. I still keep the folder because that, that will be deleted. It's only deleting the Docker container. And meanwhile, I'm going to switch on to PuTTY. Oh, here it is. Um, and within PuTTY, I'm just going to type in my address of my Synology. Port is standard because I'm using, as it says, is still 22 uh, on my side. And I'm going to click the Open button. Now, this is what I get. And I just log in to, with my normal credentials, so I use the admin login and my password that I'm normally using to get into the graphical user interface. And you can see that I'm in. So now we need to build the, um, uh, the Docker image from um, the command line. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And we, we really need to do the RVXCOM because I really want to use my uh, my switches and I want to uh, use my selfie screens in order to do anything. Um, so I'm going to create a, a container from the command line. So if you haven't done anything with the command line uh, yet in the past, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just show you how that works. Um, so first thing, we're locked in as admin, but we're not locked in as a super user, so I'm going to do the command with what we call the sudo. Um, and then I'm going to use the command after it. So the official command is docker, and I will uh, paste it in the, um, um, in the comments down below as well, so you can find it over there. So I'm going to do docker run minus d. And I'm going to use a backslash. Uh, Why well, I'm using that? Because I've, if I click Enter right now, I'm just going to go into the next line, and I can really show you what I'm doing. Um, so now I need to uh, get the volume in, and the volume is the actual uh, volume that we, what we actually created uh, with the whole folder structure. So I'm going to use Volume One. Uh, it's Docker, and you can find that over here. Um, so you can actually see that it's Docker Home Assistant. In this case, if you're going to, oh, hang on. So you can see that it's Docker at volume one, and then your availability of your storage type. Um, and that said, I'm going to just click some more. So I'm going to do Docker, and then I'm going to do Home Assistant. 
and I'm going to use the config folder, and my mount path is the config folder. And we'll go backslash again, and we'll do minus T. We're going to set the time, and we're going to use the uh, BTC at local time. And then we're going to do this, BTC local time. We're going to do the extra details on that, so it's local time. And then we're going to add the actual um, device, so the RVXCOM. And I'm going to use the uh, TTY USB 0 because that's uh, basically the, uh, the uh, device type that the system is using. I'm going to say that um, that mounts to the def TTI USB 0. Yep, backslash, okay. And the network is the host. Now you can see that there's a lot of similarities with the um, with the actual wizard that we just got through, except for that the uh, device part is can be uh, can be normally set uh, in the wizard. Uh, and here we can do it quite easy. And then we're gonna do the actual time zone, and the time zone is in this case it's Europe. And my location is Amsterdam. And I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to call my um, uh, the, 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 the um, actual image that I'm going to use is the Home Assistant. And that Home Assistant. Did I correct it? Yeah. And then I'm going to click OK. Let's see what happens. The, the system is asking me for a password, and that's because I use the uh, CPU user command. So I want to execute this command as a CPU user. And um, within Synology, that sudo password is actually the same password that you're going to use normally for your administrator account. And here we go. Oh, it's the wrong password. Give me a sec. So that's the whole thing. Um, the um, I, I should not try and typing when I'm talking to you guys. Uh, you can see that there is an error actually in the uh, in the response from the system itself. Uh, I did something wrong. Yes, I did. I forgot the E actually. I'm gonna scroll back a bit. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. And I'm gonna type in the E. See what happens, and it's built. So it's ready here in uh, Putty. So I'm going to switch off this screen, and I'm going to go back into the uh, container window. Um, and you can see that it's created. And the funny thing is, it, my previous command, which gave me an error, already created um, also a new container. So I'm, but this one is stopped, so I'm just going to delete this one. And then you can see that there's a live container running. And the system, and the, that's the funny part, um, the system has called the container Gracious Jennings. Um, I mean, it's fine with me. Uh, it actually, it actually runs already. So now you've got a Docker container with Home Assistant, and your RFX com enabled onto it. And that's where all the fun starts. You can actually start configuring Home Assistant. Uh, so you can find that in my next videos. If you uh, if you like my video and you think it's handy, uh, please like my video and follow my channel. Uh, use the um, use the follow sign on, uh, down beneath, and you can see all uh, links that I'm normally using, uh, pages that I'm using. You can find that in the uh, in the comment section down below. Thanks. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.